Hi, Dr. G back with you here. I'm going to talk with you about the required assignments for EDUC 304. And this is again just a brief overview. As we get closer to the due date for each of the assignments, of course, we will be reviewing the requirements for that particular assignment uh, in more depth. But this is just for planning purposes. Uh, one of the first things you need to notice is the fact that under due dates it says tentative. And I say tentative because oftentimes things do change depending on weather, depending on how we fast we're moving as a class. Uh, we'll determine whether or not we can meet these particular due dates. Um, Oftentimes, uh, I will judge what uh, is happening in many of your other classes and pressures that are happening um, outside of our class to determine if I will modify due dates. So please note these are tentative and but still could be used for um, basic planning purposes for you. Um, the course is a point-based course. Actually, it's more percentage-based and there are points for each assignment that are then turned into percentages. If you add up the percentages down the middle column here, you will find that they should total 100% if I've done my math correctly. Um, for each of the assignments, it is worth a certain point value. Those points are then converted to the percentage for the course. One of the first assignments that everyone's going to be involved in is doing some micro-teaching. Again, immersion is part of one of the basic foundations for this course. Immersion means you actually participating in practice of teaching language arts. So everyone is going to be micro-teaching a specific grammar rule to the rest of us. These are grammar rules that we've determined that oftentimes we need to have refreshed. Um, so uh, there is a list that I will be circulating for you to sign up. Um, these are mini lessons, meaning the lessons will last for no longer from five to 10 minutes. You will be working with a partner in preparation for these and you will pr be provided a form on which to uh, submit your lesson plan uh, that you will then teach to the entire class. Uh, another one of the assignments that you will be completing through this semester involves a series of writing samples. And I'm going to collect three writing samples. And these three writing samples are ones that I feel uh, that you will see the most often and work with the most often as you move out into the um, field, out into your own teaching experiences. You will be submitting a poetry sample, and that will be the very first submission that you will be making. You will be submitting a narrative sample of writing about an event from your life, and you will be submitting an expository um, example of your writing. And again, those due dates are posted over on the side. The due dates can be modified and, and there's a good chance that they will be modified uh, throughout the semester. Um, more specific examples for each of the writing assignments will be given as we move closer to um, the due dates for those assignments. Uh, another assignment that you will be completing, and usually this is a pair or small group assignment depending on our time frame, is the preparation of strategies uh, that would support best practices in working with English language learners. You will be uh, selecting a children's literature book uh, and then designing appropriate instructional practices uh, to support English language learners in your classroom. Um, another um, assignment that has two pieces that you will be completing. You will be designing uh, two mini lessons that will show how you would teach the writing skill of pre-drafting and how you might teach the writing skill of revision uh, to students at a third grade level. I will be providing you with a plan for that. Um, as you might have guessed, the book Marvelous Mini Lessons 
might come in very handy when you are completing this particular um, assignment. Uh, there is a final exam for this course. I use a final exam because I I feel like it is a way for me to see all of the cumulative knowledge that you have gained through the semester. Uh, it is a very practical based exam. Um, it is not multiple choice. It is not true false. It is not matching. It is very much application of all the things that we've learned this semester. You may bring your notes. You may bring your uh, textbooks in for this exam. You may even use internet resources to complete this particular exam. Um, participation. If you will notice, there are 160 points for participation in this class. That is 25% of your grade. That is the largest component of your grade. That's how important participation is to me in this course. You will get points for professional characteristics and dispositions. You will get points for your attendance. And you will also receive points for your weekly reading responses, quizzes, homework assignments, and your active involvement within, um, within the class. So class participation, just being here, earns you a fourth of your grade. So that's how important I think it is for you to be here in class. Uh, you do notice at the bottom there are some opportunities for some extra extra credit points. Um, extra credit points can be earned by attending um, the variety of professional development opportunities that are offered um, through SVEA um, and other organizations across campus through workshops or presentations. Those extra participation points or extra credit points rather will be added to the participation grade at the end of the course. And I do uh, require some type of documentation of attendance um, if you do participate in professional development opportunities. So again, this is just an overview of assignments and tentative dates of when these required assignments are going to be due for this course. Your responsibility is to keep up with the scores you receive on these assignments.